Speaking of casting though and good casting, have you thought about new generation people or has there been a person who's been in a movie or a show and you're like, oh my God, that's Darrow. Oh, there's Mustang. Pax, hello. Not particularly, oh. you know, uh, I don't really fan cast in my head. You know, it's 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 also a it's a moving uh, figure because uh, by the time this thing finally gets made, you know, the the original ideas they're already like you know thirty they're thirty five. You know, I'm asked that ask that question a lot, but no. Who do you no, see I, yourself as most? Me? Yeah. Oh God. Um, I don't really do that. Like I don't. Um, you wrote them. I don't project. Yeah. But how much, yeah. what percentage of yourself are in some of these characters? You're like, where is that? Well, you know, probably in terms of um, projection, it's usually going to be your protagonist. Yeah. Um, Murakami had a wonderful thing that he said about protagonists. It's kind of like um, you were a twin and uh, two identical twin with someone with a brother and uh, they were stolen away when you were two years old and raised uh, in a completely different country, um, learning a completely different language. And that's how your protagonists are. They come from you, you know, starting off in the same way. And then you see it through the lens of whatever world they exist in. So I'd say Darrow's probably the closest. Uh, he's like a long lost brother who got separated when I was young and then grew up in a different direction. What do you love about um, Darrow and what do you not like about Darrow? Oh, uh, there's a lot of things I don't like. Um, his stubbornness, um, his humor, um, but there is a character that continues to grow, you know. Sometimes I get flack for Darrow using a particular parlance or talking about, um, you know, having uh, internal biases. And like, he's a 16 year old minor yeah. who's never seen this guy. But he's, already been, know, he's, but he's already been married. He's already been married, so he's advanced in some ways and behind in other ways. Mm. I, have a, I have trouble often in a far flung world when the character, the protagonist or character, has all of our cultural mores and has it has to be as progressive as we are as a society. Um, I think that, like, the character should come from a position um, or what makes sense in their society, you know, and have been raised according to the rules of that society, and then you can show growth. So a lot, I think that Darrow's hubris and his pride as a hell diver is something that I find even sometimes annoying. Okay. And, 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 but well, necessary. And necessary, but also like, you know, that's, uh, this gotta be a cocky son of a bitch and then humbled. And I think that, that pride is an interesting thing to play with, with the protagonist. So I'd say his pride, um, perhaps also his, uh, inability to listen to others, um, probably reflections the, my younger self. Mm. Um, yeah. So I'd say those are things I don't like things I like about him are his also his virtues it's very greek his unwavering stubbornness you know his uh, going to get the job done and his uh, lack of quibbling when a moral when a morally gray decision or a morally bankrupt decision needs to be made to attain his goal i think is one of my favorite things about him as a protagonist for instance uh, darrow came about as a character because i was irritated by the hollywood type protagonist who has to uh, be morally clean at the end of a, of a story. Say, for instance, they've beaten the, the enemy and the enemy's laying on the ground, the villain. And then they say, I'll spare you or whatever. And they show their good. And then they turn their back or whatever. And then the enemy lunges up with a spear to stab them. And then they have to kill the enemy or a friend shoots the enemy. Because what that does is it teaches the audience that they can get the catharsis they want by having the enemy killed, but have no repercussions No for blood it. on their hands. But I wanted Darrow to be like, let's bathe this guy in blood and see if his, his thesis still stands. And let's see how his heart can war against itself. Because I think that's fundamental for having an interesting protagonist. Someone who's a fundamentally at war with themselves. Mm. Um, and their exterior actions don't match their interior um, all the time. Because the beauty of a story is then when they're doing things where their exterior actions don't match their interior and you feel the tension. And then at the end, they express their interior world on the exterior world. And that's a full culmination moment and you should, should usually happen at the apex part of a story. You know, ideally in a climax. And that's why some climaxes feel really satisfying in movies when the interior world is finally being expressed right. because there is no more tension and all it is for the audience is catharsis. You thought a lot about this, huh? Mm. <laughs> 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 Got to do something with my time. Um, more questions. One of the ones I really want to get to with this is what was it like? So you technically wrote Red Rising in six weeks and then it needed to be yeah. edited and you push it out there and like you know apparently yeah. you took it to 120 you got rejected 120 times before you found a publisher that'll publish it yeah I got uh so six weeks to about like three months it's kind of vague because you enter into a fugue state when you're doing it but I'd say the rough draft was it was a very very rough draft done in six weeks 
Yeah. And I'd say I had a more more formalized one in three. And then I uh, got I, I wasn't able to even attain an agent um, because you have to submit books to uh, agents because publishers won't read um, they won't read your stuff because of lawsuit uh, yeah. possibilities. Uh, so yeah, I'd, I'd queried over 120 agents and been rejected. And then finally, and I queried uh, 28 times for Red Rising and no one wanted it. I had some interest, but I uh, was still kind of getting jerked around. And then finally, an agent uh, pop came up, came up out of the got it, emailed me, and she had uh, been the assistant on an agent who had rejected me f- six times. And she said, "I'm starting my own desk or her own client list, uh, and I'd love for you to be my first client." And she was 23 as well. Wow. And and um, but when she spoke of the book and she was just so passionate, uh, I needed to go with you know I had to go with her. And then then we started shopping it to uh, publishers, and there was interest. And in, actually, uh, a publisher wanted to buy it, but they wanted to cut out the first hundred pages and just start with there at the institute. Oh. And so I faced my first uh, my first pe- test, my passage, and I said that they were wrong, and I asked, you know, would they would they back off that? And they said they wouldn't. They would only buy it if I agreed to do that. And weirdly, like I have no idea where I came. I have, like when you look back at things you like decisions you made, sometimes I'm 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 astounded that I had the gall to say no. I said no, and then two weeks later I received a three book offer for five times the money with Random wow. House, who didn't want me to change a thing. Wow. And right. that then ended up the guy who bought the book there ended up leaving the company five weeks later, which is called being orphaned. And usually when you're orphaned, you lose your champion and your book can like die off. Then uh, I got given to another editor, a man named Mike Braff, who is now my best human friend on this planet. And he was a uh, comparable in age. And, you know, he's my Samwise, you know, yeah. he's like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's, he's my Samwise. Like he's one of my favorite people on this planet. And the books wouldn't be the books without his influence on them. And so it's a weird, weird path to it. But uh, some people think it's, you know, it can seem like an overnight success or whatever because yeah, I was young and I did it. Iceberg. But, yeah. you know, but it's always a slog, you know. Um, but when it was published, you were a New York Times bestseller and you instantly mm. got the rights for a movie. What was yeah. that like going from so much rejection to the top of your game? And then thinking that that was going to do that, and then the well, movie didn't get made, you know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, all it is, you know, until you're a certain point, all it is is entering into a new, like, it's like, you play Elden Ring? Yes. Yeah, it's like kicking ass and being like, God, my guy, is, my character is amazing. And you just, you know, you finally beat the boss and you get, you know, the best sword. And then you, the next boss you face, you just get completely annihilated yep. by. And you're just like, yeah, humbled. I was so that's an astronomer. Was like. They were very good. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I play yeah. the uh, I play a guts build uh, quality guts build strength decks. Oh, uh, is that right? Build. Yeah, well, I I love the I love the an, um, the anime guts or anime manga, uh, uh, berserk, and uh, so I uh, yeah I do the great sword yeah guts build. Oh. But anyway, uh, <laughs> mm, uh, it's very it's very humbling because you think here I've arrived and yeah, then you yeah. just get, like stepped on by the foot of a giant. And, you know, I showed up to Hollywood. It was in a bidding war between Sony and Universal. I was so excited, thought it was going to be made, and then uh, stuck in development hell. You know, uh, not the most fun experience. But then, uh, fortunately, they finally had uh, several iterations of the script. I wrote the first, like, I don't know, 13 drafts or something. Wow. And then finally they hired a, they hired another writer, and he wrote, you know, a pretty abysmal draft. And when I was reading it, I was thanking, I was thanking God or, you know, Athena, rather, yeah. uh, thanking Athena um, that uh, it was so bad because then I was like, there's no way they can make this. And true to form, uh, or true enough, they didn't make it. And I got the rights back, so I held on to the rights for a long time because I was like, I don't want to get squashed again because they were just changing so many things. They, you know, they were trying to make a love love triangle between, um, the, how would I say it? They wanted to, one of the ideas that was floated was making Severo a girl and uh, having a love triangle between him and Mustang and Darrow. And I'm like, guys. Oh, okay. The, 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 I already did my love triangle. The love triangle was meant to be EO and Mustang and yeah. I kill one of the corners. So then Darrow is actually dealing with interesting things. Not who do I pick, but more mm-hmm. so, how do I honor someone I truly love? No, is it betrayal of my people? That's far more interesting. Team werewolf or team vampire pierce. Oh, God damn oh, it. <laughs> I know. I know. And sometimes, you know, you get these notes and you're just like, run, run for the hills. <laughs> I'll just write for my dog. Also, I just don't think Red Rising should be a movie. I think it'd be better as a TV series. 
Yeah, that's the general idea now. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, I agree. I agree. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's in it's in uh, development with a streamer. Unfortunately, I'm rather uh, what did I say? how did they say it? Like golden handcuffs are, or a golden oh. muzzle rather. So I can't say who it's being adapted by. But um, it's been uh, in development for quite a while, and I think it'll get made. Um, we'll know probably this year whether or not it will. It's okay. really dependent upon the script being in a place where they feel like throwing money at at the uh, at the. At the it thing. needs a budget. It needs a budget. I yeah. should have just written a romantic comedy. 